Lord Ares, please accept this token of my deep appreciation for your generous support. An offering for me? Indeed. How gracious that you keep me in your thoughts. Know that likewise I keep you in mine. I sense so much death at the gates of your father's realm of late, my kin. Now I know that seems perfectly ordinary on the face of it, except there's something more. I wonder if you know the reason why. I sense the mark of my lord Ares on you, love. He's poorly understood among the gods, yet surely you can see fair qualities in him and me. Damn it, Charon. You had it out with Charon again, huh? And it turned out like it did before. The thing you have to understand is he's got lots of upper body strength. You seen the definition in his arms? Maybe try some rowing for yourself. You try it. Forget something again. Honored to have met you, great Achilles, our royal guard. Good to know whom to turn to, should anything run afoul around here. So it was you who instructed my son in the martial ways. Indeed, Your Grace. He was a talented student. If only you could have seen his progress, surely you would have been very proud. I am proud. You know, you were already quite the name back on the surface when I lived upon Olympus. I should think your legend spread much farther still since then. Oh, I doubt that. Although, thank you, Your Grace. Have another bottle, why don't you, Father? Not like it's going to change anything between us, right? All the nectar in the underworld can't change what's already happened. Or change yourself. Hmm. You're probably correct. You must think it is my age that makes me obstinate. Unable to change my nature. But I have always been inflexible. You think I'm proud of it? You call me father like it's an insult. I deserve the title only as a technicality, I know. You could start being a better father at any point. There's no one stopping you but you. Yes, well, unfortunately I am a significant impediment. You should be well aware of that. You were able to stop me. I have thus far been unable to do so. Well, with that attitude... One thing before you depart again, boy. Until the Queen's intentions with Olympus come to pass, not a word to anyone about her presence here. Do you understand? I do. But she won't have to hide forever. <sighs> Um, Nix, you don't suppose Charon would hold it against me if we had a little fight? To the death, I mean. None of Charon's brothers ever dared fight with him whilst growing up. Why would you fathom such a ruinous idea, child? It kind of already happened. And I can confirm he's rather strong. Something I can do to make it up to him. Probably not, for it is unnecessary. Likely he appreciates having an adversary in his own way. Few would so much as dare. A friendly rivalry it is, then. Time to shine. Lord Dionysus. Lord Dionysus, mate, you have made the mood down here materially less miserable, and I am much obliged. What is that for me? Why, sag? I mean, you really shouldn't have. You know I can't get enough of this stuff, right? 
You gotta let me in on something, Zack. How did you gather up so much ambrosia there? I mean, sometimes I think the stuff is plentiful up here, but you are positively swimming in it, man. Lady Athena. You got your hands on Malphon, the twin fists, I see. No ordinary weapon. Prone to fits of savagery quite unbecoming of a well-trained warrior. Then watch yourself and throw not caution to the wind. Uncle Poseidon, it's been excellent to know you, sir, so please, this is for you. Oh, I am positively moved by your affection, little nephew. Though I think I have just the thing for you in turn. Here, I shall transfer it to you. I thank you, Uncle. My oceans, they are filled with danger, not just water, little Hades. Any of the dead you face, they met their mortal end at sea and not on land. Let's pay chaos a visit then. once fought bravely by my side. You know that, don't you, nephew? We prevailed against the Titans and established law upon the Earth. Your father then descended to the land of death, and we've not seen much of each other since. Shall we? So... Well, Zag, any last requests this time before I send you home? Let's see, how about a swift and painful death? Would that be possible? Be cheeky all you like. You'll get exactly what you asked, and nothing more. Hey, mighty generous of you to keep me stocked up on the stuff, Your Royal Majesty. My pleasure. I'm always pleased to see you during my otherwise generally unfortunate travels in Asphodel. Eurydice, how long have you been down here anyway, if you don't mind my asking? Seems like you're pretty settled in. It's quite a lovely place. How long have I been down here, huh? Huh, I don't have the faintest. You lose your sense of time once you're a shade, or maybe once there's not a sun or moon over your head. But yeah, I found myself a decent spot and fixed it up a bit. What's the matter, Lerny? You seem quite upset. About when we last spoke, I care about you, Thanatos, a lot. Though you asked what you are to me, how am I supposed to even answer that? Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I miss not feeling anything. Can't always trust what feelings say. I get to thinking, are we only friends, or... Look, this is embarrassing. To think discussing feelings would be even harder than annihilating father's forces. But I've been asking myself the same thing, Fan, if it's any reassurance. Well, if you come up with any answers, I guess let me know. Good running into you. You too. Achilles thinks that I'm the god of blood? Hate to keep you from your parchment work. Be still. These waters, teeming with Poseidon's river denizens. You offering to... You mistook my meaning. First, you shall have my spear. The Underworld Prince is getting rather good at this, but let us say he perished anyhow. <gasps> Did pretty well that time. Um, hello? Well done, Zagreus. I 
must confess, I do enjoy having a good bottle of nectar every now and then. And you appear to have a careful eye for such bottles, from what I can tell. My careful eye has got to be the green one, hasn't it? To having a discerning eye, Mother. Mother, one thing I was wondering about was, how did you summon Charon to your surface residence, especially without, you know, being dead? Oh, why, he gave me his calling card after he graciously helped get me out of here the first time. No doubt at Nyx's request, but still. Never thought I'd use it, but I still kept it, just in case. No idea what a calling card is, but okay. If I don't pet your other heads, don't bite my arm off, deal? Enough of this, boy. Even mortals know better. I don't want your nectar or ambrosia or whichever offerings. You owe me no such thing, and I shall not accept it any longer. In fact, here. You shall take all of it back. Why? It's just nectar, father. Lighten up. I get that you're surly about everything, but please at least try toward decency with me. If not for me, then for mother. How dare you lecture me? I mean... Look, as you told me yourself, there's no changing what already transpired. And our memories are warnings. When you have lived as long as I have, you come to understand your weaknesses. What are you getting at? You're just going to give up, stick with what's comfortable for you instead of making any real effort at making peace with your son. Ugh. Listen to me. My attempts at making peace are going to be rather subtle for your tastes. I cannot change the past, and there is only so much I can do about the future. I tell you this because... I shall not lie to you again. That much, I swear. All right. Well, it's a start. Always wanted to ask you something, Father. Whose skull is that there on your shoulder? If it's not too personal. I did not chronicle all Typhon's wretched offspring, boy. No one did. Some of them sit upon our shoulders now, lest we forget that things could easily have turned out rather differently. And much, much worse. So these are just the remains of the spawn of the most hideous monstrosity of all time, which you and your brother slew, got it? I guess putting the dead in their place is all part of the job. I can hardly imagine what it was like before you and the Olympians took charge. You're better off. Orpheus, I know Father appreciates your songs to the extent he's capable of appreciating anything. Though, has Nyx ever responded to them? She's always right nearby, yet you two don't seem to talk. Almighty Nyx appears to tolerate my presence, Agrius. For she could cast me into everlasting darkness if my song failed to be pleasing to her. She is a most discerning listener. That she is. Achilles on break, I guess. <laughs> what are those shades muttering about? Hey, what is it you're always staring at out there anyway, Fan? I don't see anything. The river Styx is right in front of you and you don't see anything, Zag? I can watch it endlessly. Studying a competition, you might say. Most mortals expect to get here by a river with Charon, not with me. So you're locked in ruthless battle with a river, searching it for any signs of weakness, that sort of thing. That sounds stressful. I find it rather soothing, as a matter of fact. A break from having to deal constantly with mortal souls. Speaking of which, I have to pick somebody up right now. Go get them. And then all seven of those wretches tried cutting to the front of the procession line. Can you believe the nerve? As though they'd get an audience that way. <laughs> what a bunch of dummies! What were they even thinking, cutting the line? I mean, in front of you? 
Let's just say if they still have any complaints for our Lord Hades, they'll be waiting for a long, long time before they get the chance to bring them up. Ladies' night, I guess. Or day. I don't know. Here's all I caught. We're settled up. with Lord Dionysus around. Wretches of the underworld, take heed. The rivers flowing through this realm divide its region suitably enough, and every shade knows better than to try and cross them. Just have to cross a couple rivers then. Lord Dionysus, mate, you must have no shortage of supreme vintage at your disposal, but this one's from me. Why, Zach, how positively thoughtful, man. I mean, I love it. Positively love this stuff. And I am very moved that you would think of me for it. I heard you got to Orpheus. He's got this whole entire ballad now about how you are really me. Or maybe it's the other way around. I have no idea. <laughs> Here. Lord Uncle Zeus. Oh. Lord Zeus, I bid you please accept my humble offering for all you've done for me. Why, that is rather generous of you, and I'm grateful for it, nephew. How good of you to make attempts at reciprocity. that I know and love. Or used to love, at least, the dear old thing. Now I quite love these shocking bolts of mine. Though I am proud you've given Aegis a good home and bear it in my name. Might as well. be lost this is an unexpected gesture cousin i do appreciate it though please do not feel obliged i offer you my friendship not alone to be repaid were you not close to having reached the surface lately cousin then this can only mean some unforeseen impediment prevented your escape that's who i think it is Hey, sir. I'm really very flattered, Highness. You didn't have to get me anything. I mean, your company's more than enough for me. I figured you could do with something more than that this time around, good sir. Now you be careful out there, Highness. The kindly Megara is out for blood. She kept on groaning about the last exchange between the two of you. You must have showed her good. I think I might have gotten lucky. Easy does it. Cheers, mate. What's the latest, Baldy? Had any good tumbles down that hill of late? Brilliant. Baldy, how do you handle being trapped in Tartarus for all eternity, doomed to be pushed up and down a hill repeatedly for no good reason?
Necto. I gotta ask, how come you keep on showing up, Red Blood? I thought you would have had enough beatings by now. Well, you know, I've come to enjoy these visits with you so much, Electo, that I've made it something of a regular routine. Form good habits and then stick to them, I say. You call this a good habit, huh? Maybe for me it is. Well, come here all you like, and I will be here waiting every single time. About once every three times, anyway. Guess I get a break. Hey, you. Thanks, Your Majesty. Though, you're not gonna get in trouble bringing me this stuff, are you? <laughs> no. I don't think I can get into more trouble at the moment. May this make your dishes that much more delectable. I get you something for the road there, hon? Heard you got through pretty quick last time. Not bad, not bad. Good day, Lenny. And now, prepare to die. <laughs> Next opponent has arrived in short order. Short order? That was another jab about my height, wasn't it? I do not jab. All of my strength goes into every strike. Observe. Think you can beat me this time, Father? You come here bearing Brother Zeus's aegis. I wonder how much more insulting you could be. What? I haven't even started to insult you here yet, Father. Flustered by the old Shield of Chaos, then. Doubtless Zeus does not even remember wielding it. I never should have relied on him for anything after that. Then come. Let's see if you're any better with it than your great uncle. <clears throat> for students of Achilles, I fear that you surpassed even his skill by now. You win. There are a myriad of tales to be told, of both great deeds and of vainglorious defeats. And this has been a tale that falls somewhere in the middle overall. No, wait! Well, that was interesting. Ah! I'm up! I'm up! Guess Mother's off someplace. Finally returned to your senses, haven't you, Orpheus? A court musician who refused to sing. Such nonsense. I trust there shall be no more insubordination from you moving forward. I'm gladdened that my songs yet stir your soul, my lord. But I have to confess, my choice to sing again was motivated largely by the prince. And by my muse, of course. Still going on about your so-called muse, I see. You had your chance with Eurydice. You squandered it. And now you're here. A deal is a deal. I expect you to comply with your end of our agreement. That's why he's stuck here, huh? I don't wish to presume, lad, but you seem more glum than usual. What's weighing on you there, if you don't mind? Oh, it's just... I've never slain a living creature, sir, until my recent journey to the temple up above. I know they're just satyrs and vermin, but it's not the same as sending wretches to the depths. Look, all mortal life is fragile. It simply is a struggle to survive. Sooner or later it fails to succeed, and then it ends up here. And we have room enough for everyone, even the satyrs and the vermin of the world. Now that you mention it, I have to say I'm glad we can accommodate all former living things. And at least mortals get to rest assured knowing what happens once they die. Must really ease the mind. Indeed, lad. You don't like it when I pet your other heads, huh? No. <laughs> Oh. 
Let's go with this one, then. Always wanted my own entertainment table, and I can finally afford one, I suppose. Um, Nix, you ever have a burning urge to find the case files for the circumstances under which our court musician bound himself to eternal servitude here in this house, and forever lost his opportunity to be with his beloved muse? I was wondering if you had a remedy for that. Our court musician brings a certain peace to this abode, my child. But you may discover, once you find his case files in section Zeta Pi Omega, upper beta folder, that the consequences that he suffers may be quite in excess of his trespasses. Zeta Pi Omega, upper beta folder. I'll look into it as soon as possible. How's it going? must be worried seeing us like this. Lately always at each other's throats. Take care, Meg. Here's what I caught lately. Totally worth it. Thinking I ought to check the old administrative chamber now. Contract I'm looking for should be back there. Nestled among the towering administrative parchment work of the long-since-deceased lies an old document concerning a special pact signed by a once-living court musician who attempted vainly to rescue his wife from death. Okay, it should be dispatched over to the house contractor now. contract. I can release him. In the name of Hades, I hereby release Orpheus from the terms of his pact. What? Where did you unearth that blasted contract? Mordecor. An object intricately carven solely for the purposes of recreation now resides within the pleasure-seeking prince's chambers, although his lack for an opponent limits its appeal. Face me yourself, old man. I do appreciate this gift to me, although you really shouldn't have. The suffering which you inflict is ample compensation in itself. A sudden scourge of war would help you out of your predicament. Why, I would stir one up for you without a second thought. Goddess Athena. There must be some unconquerable force or foe awaiting you just at the border of your realm and ours. We cannot even see it through a shroud of darkness there. I shall make certain that your family knows it may take considerable time to surpass. So fear not, for we are patient here. You stab me, I stab you. Lady Artemis, I hope that you'll accept this offering for all your kindness and support. Hey, thank you for this, really. And I've just the thing to offer in return. It's just a gift, okay? Lady Artemis, you honor me. Hey, hold a moment, Zagreus. I could have sworn. You were so close before, but now you're back? Uh, must have tripped up just when victory was close at hand. It happens all the time. We'll get you out of there, you'll see. Oh, great. Good. Know something, Red Blood? Try as I might, I still have not forgiven you for beating me last time. Call it a crippling character flaw, I don't know. Forgiveness can take time, though self-reflection is a healthy step. We're making progress. You think we're making progress? Here? <laughs> Why, you piece of trash? I'll show you progress. Eurydice. You've been snacking on onions or something there, hon? No offense or anything, but you smell like you ate a whole one of them raw. Um, yes, but wait, 
How else are you supposed to eat those things? What, are you kidding me? You can grill them, saute them, fry them, boil them, pickle them, roast them? Oh, hon, you've been missing out. I know you missed me, Lenny, and I missed you too. Good. You have returned to my chamber. I trust you are familiar now with what this means. It means I've challenged you to a battle of strength and glory, because apparently that's all there is to do for fun around here for those such as yourself. That... Yes. Essentially, that is correct. Prepare. Tell me something, monster. Whence did you steal that kingly blade you're brandishing about? It seems ill-fitting for one such as you. Oh, this. I wouldn't say I stole it so much as naturally wooed the fates into bestowing it upon me. You could say I'm kind of testing it out. Ah, well then, I pity whosoever shall lay hands upon that cursed thing once you are finished with this testing of yours. I think that we can make it rather quick. A gift. I have a simple token for you, goddess, although it's insufficient thanks for all the aid you've given me. You are most gracious, cousin, to extend this offering. You honor me. Yet, I would ask you think of your well-being for the time, not mine. Thank you, mate. I tell you not to ask too many questions of my good professional associate nearby, but then who are we kidding, boss? Not like he'd answer you those questions anyhow. We made it, Stygius. I hope this Arthur serves you well someday. I never had any respect for Stygius, that blade you bear. Perhaps unfairly due to Brother Poseidon's sloppy form when once he wielded it. But now it seems quite different in your care. I think we've grown quite close to one another, yes. Enough to where I've come to know a different side of this fine blade right here. This is the aspect of some Arthur fellow. Maybe the two of you could get acquainted properly. Arthur? No name either of gods or kings of any realm I know. Then introduce us as you say to this new amateur to whom your blade rendered its services. Uh, blast. Uh, you stubborn. You shrug off death as though it means nothing to you. I could have had you. I did it. So joyfully did Zagreus attempt to gain the surface that why he just rose too quickly. And we know how that one goes from Icarus's tail. Oh. Showed you that time, Father. <laughs> I knew you could do it. Congratulations! Mother, you'll forgive my asking, but your mother used to call you by a different name, didn't she? Ugh, oh, don't remind me. Imagine if I called you Zaggy Poo from when you were born to this very moment. That's how that name felt to me. I much preferred the name my father gave to me. Your mortal father, right? So he called you Persephone. What was he like? He was kind to me, and funny. Little bringer of destruction I was to him. I liked that. He was right, I was a terror. But then he passed. I was very little still. My mother never spoke of him again. Demeter mentioned him a bit to me. She seems... I don't know, but I, I don't sense that she regrets the relationship or anything. Just sad about the outcome, I think. I suppose I can see that. I thought I might end up like father. Growing old, wasting away. Then the time flew by, and I realized I was closer to mother's side. Mortals certainly don't have it easy. But their limited days, it means... They live their lives to the fullest, I think. At least we've some of that in us. Indeed, my son. 
You've always been there for me, boy. Those Catholic companion things you have from Nyx, or whoever they ended up with, I know they have been benefiting you. Yeah, well, I'm to attempt to escape this place by any means necessary, right? I figure if I can call on Olympus for aid, maybe some of my friends can help me in a pinch as well. Not what I mean. Some of your friends have been reluctant to engage against me during our scuffles on the surface. Know that I have authorized them to proceed if necessary. Point, really? You're saying it's okay for your own loyal subjects to side against you up there. You won't take it out on them. I consider it an expansion of their responsibilities. Now go. My friend. Sabrius, the most amazing circumstances have occurred. The terms of my employment, they've been altered such that I may visit Asphodel sometimes. May visit her. That's great. Orpheus, what are you waiting for, mate? Go and find your muse out there. You two have lots to catch up on, I think. I think you're right. I am so very anxious, I must say. But I must also thank you for this opportunity and for speaking with me all this time. So, how might I repay you? Why is it always talk of payment around here? You're my mate, and your songs have lifted many spirits here, including mine. Now go, and make the most of this, will you? Thank you. I shall. I shall. A word, child? Child, I know not exactly what you did, but I detected faintly an attempt by Chaos to reach out to me. A message merely at the edges of my consciousness, yet... I felt certain it was there, but I could not discern it otherwise. What does Chaos want from me? I think Chaos wishes to re-establish contact with you, Nyx. The two of you drifted apart from one another, so I think I can imagine. I lost touch with Thanatos a while, but that was nothing in comparison to this. Isn't this some way you can reconnect? Now that the house is strong and this realm orderly, I do not know. But I shall think upon it, child. Leave me, please. I swear you're right, that one is such an idiot. Oh, anyway, I'd best get back to work. Next round's on me, Dusa, and you take care. You take care too, Miss Meg. Thanks for the drink. Bye now. They get along at least. Head chef. All right then. Prince. Hey, sir. Meant to say I hope I didn't get you into too much trouble after letting me in father's bedchambers. Think nothing of it, lad. It was a risk I was willing to take. And for his part, your father looked the other way on that one. Though I did not expect you to get free reign to go there as you please. Mother can be quite persuasive. definitely came to pass. Hope Orpheus and Eurydice can be happy again. Grateful for your help, Lady Artemis. Holy Excalibur, thank you for your strength. <laughs> 